Hi, so the Engagement Excellence Summit into the first of the breakout sessions and then after lunch to one of the keynote speakers. So I'm going to cover both together here. Um, uh, in, in a torturous decision, Reward Gateway gave us five different choices for each of the breakout sessions and they all looked great. Major piece of feedback was just, I want to be selfish. I want to see more of these. Uh, although I've been reminded all of these sessions, so all the breakout sessions, the keynote sessions, they are being recorded. Um, so if you weren't able to attend or if you weren't able to see some of the other sessions, you can see them later. So keep an eye out with Reward Gateway stuff. They are coming. I chose to see the first of the two rec strategic recognition sort of threads, uh, and it was a great place to work. So uh, as the name suggests, their operation is recognizing great places to work. Um, and in particular, it gives them access to sort of organization, allows them to sort of compare what's going on in organizations that we recognize are great places to work and what goes on in organizations uh, that are not. What's the sort of difference? And yes, uh, the, the organizations that they recognize, they have uh, roughly 40% more applications per job than other organizations. So they've got a great brand out there. Um, employees stay longer. They're more likely to be engaged. Um, so to be proud of the work that they're involved in um, and therefore delivering more. Now, this was the session where um, it was highlighted that yes, pay is a huge factor in attracting people into the workplace. If you're advertising a role and trying to get someone through the door, pay is right up there, top of the list, okay? That's what people need. But once you've got them through the door, pay, financial rewards, are a very poor indicator of how likely someone is to be engaged or to stay. So we need to get pay right. We need pay to be fair. We need to get people through the door with an attractive looking package. But once they're here, pay is not the best motivator. Pay is not what keeps people here necessarily. So we need to look wider at the things that do. And yes, it is the total rewards. It's the total package and the total experience that you deliver. And immediately we are right back to the themes of the conference. We are back to respect, purpose and relationship. We are about valuing people, giving their work meaning and yes, engaging them, recognising them. Now, in terms of the session, um, you know, really fascinating. It was kind of drawing on a, a wealth of their experience and just sort of interactions with all sorts of different size organizations. So in terms of uh, what they covered, it's sort of, you know, a few bits and bobs. It's sort of f food for thought. Like if you're going to deliver something, you know, kind of like these are things that different organizations, different sizes, different sectors have chosen to do. Straight off the bat, an organization that had formed a reward and recognition committee. So, issue they were trying to resolve. Um, if you think about it, often uh, initiatives will come up from the HR team or from management and they'll be signed off by senior management. Now, that's okay, but it's providing a certain point of view. And the thing is, you might be coming up with things that really resonate with that kind of population. So the more senior manager population, maybe higher earners, but you might be missing and kind of, you know, not really offering true value to uh, the whole organization. So the different parts of it, the different levels. So by having a recognition reward committee formed of people from different roles, different levels across the business, it means that they have a group um, of all different views who are looking at and proposing options that would work for all different parts. So not necessarily you know, stuff that works for everybody, but stuff that is least making sure there are different pieces of the package or different things you're doing that do touch all different parts of the organization. So no one is sort of left out. One simple thing, we know that uh, recognition uh, is best personalized. It needs to be personal to the individual rather than something just generic or one size fits all. Um, so an organization, when people join, uh, giving them a, uh, a my favorite things list to complete. So just here you go, you know, drop down a, a few things that you like, things that are hobbies, you know, things that you do. And that way you've just got a little record to tap into so that if you want to do something for the individuals, fantastic. Here's a thing, I can get this 
and I can go, great, oh, I can see, you know, they really enjoy stamp collecting, they really enjoy, you know, uh, jigsaws, whatever it might be, you know, this is the extent of my hobbies, you know, my God, how exciting is my life? Um, but yes, you can get something targeted for them, and then you've got someone else, they're off clubbing or skiing, and you can do something for them, but you've got that bit of information about them, kind of simple to build in, gather, and then, yeah, make things more personalised. Um, a manager recognition toolkit. So, I mean, to be honest, this is just a great one uh, that everyone should do. But if you've got recognition programs, having like a proper little toolkit that not just explains how you do recognition in your organization, but offers a range of options, some choice for the organization and how you do it. And this is helpful because the thing is, recognition is not one size fits all. Some pieces, it will be a team environment and people will prefer team recognition. Some people will prefer individual recognition, but that might be a big fuss. It might be a quiet word. A toolkit that provides options for managers so that they can tailor it to the needs of their area. Fantastic. Um, making sure, uh, offering coaching and for your managers on how to provide feedback. We know that most people don't take managerial roles for the first time because they're best at being a manager. It's a different skill set. And we don't often look for that skill set when we promote. More often, it's just we think you're really great at the job you do. Now, please lead a team and share that greatness. And actually, providing good feedback, positive or negative, is not an inherent uh, human skill. Um, you know, it's just, I, I think a lot of people suck at it, to be honest. It's just like, we're, you know, we're reluctant to do it. It's just like, well, how can we provide the feedback sandwich, positive, negative, positive? You know, it's really important because I don't want to demoralize people. And it's just like, yeah, you know, that can be part of it. But it's just like, we worry about it. We want it to come across well. You know, we're reluctant to do negative feedback. We can um, overstress positive feedback to the extent that people don't even realize that there's any negative feedback. Certainly had that one in performance rating uh, appeals. And so, yeah, help your people out. Feedback is important. It's how we shape people and how we make them grow. So give them a helping hand. Help them help their people by providing them great feedback. Really interesting one, but changing the script on costs. So... Often when it comes to recognition or engagement, uh, there's all sorts of good reasons to do it. But part of it um, focuses on the fact that, well, if we can engage people, they'll stay longer. If they're staying longer, we're not recruiting as much. And if we're not recruiting as much, then we save money. The direct costs of recruitment and also the indirect costs of having a break in employment. And everywhere I've worked, that's been presented as a potential saving, which is great. You know, it's this whole piece. Oh, it shows we're commercial. It shows we're thinking about the bottom line. But actually, in some ways, that lacks vision. Why not take that external cost and turn it into an internal budget? To say, look, having a more engaged and motivated workforce is in itself intrinsically value, valuable. It raises the productivity of the team. It improves us across the board. Yes, we might save on uh, recruitment, but the thing is, when we have to spend money to make this happen, and you do need to spend money, not the earth, you can do it with a comparatively small budget, but still, you can have real difficulty getting sign-off for the money that will actually add the value and make these things change. So often it's like, oh, can we not just do something with like basic cards or just saying thank you? And it's like, oh, yes, you can. That's a part of it that helps, but couldn't we do more? And indeed, it reminds me of a state in the US where they were looking at their um, sort of their benefits, uh, in particularly for out of work mothers. And they had a really interesting program where what they did was they invested heavily in sort of state funded childcare. So how can we help get single mothers and sort of and, and families overall, how can we help them get back into the workplace by providing affordable childcare? And their point 
was that they didn't save any money. So they kind of reduced their overall bill in terms of, you know, unemployment benefits and support for these non-working people. But at the same time, they were spending a similar amount, but providing on the childcare. But their point overall was, we have created a better environment. These people are working. They have a better sense of self-worth. They're not on handouts. Um, they are now spending inside the economy. We have spent the same overall amount of money, but we have put it to better use. And I think that's a fantastic attitude to start taking, especially when we look at the bills for recognition. We are taking money and we are redistributing it for a better purpose. And a final interesting one from them was uh, a place with summer hours. In terms of their organisation, they found most of their work was in Q4 and Q1. That was where big projects would land and where they'd tend to find the largest work. So if Q1 and Q4 is a business and people are actually tending to put in more hours around that time, in the summer, they ran summer hours. So in one place, you leave work at 2 p.m. on a Friday, just over the summer period. And it's an informal way of giving back to people and sort of recognising Yes, you put in more here, but this is where we can sort of give it back to you. This is where we can say thank you for what you've done. We recognise you've put in more. And this is the give and take of that situation. So great places to work, some insights into other places and things that they've done. Not for everyone, but great ideas to start thinking about, to consider. Another session, first keynote after lunch. Uh, I want to cover here. Just because I realised I didn't have as much to say about it. Um, it was a great session. It was uh, Seville Rahmova, uh, apparently sort of the product brains behind Reward Gateway's platform. And um, had some inspiring things, which I'll, I'll cover. Uh, but she was more talking about the platform itself. You know, fair enough. This is Reward Gateway Shindig. Uh, we're here because of them, you know, and they wanted to talk about the platform themselves. So in terms of the more general stuff, um, very interesting speech. She was sort of tying together... Um, kind of like different great moments in HR history. Uh, so, you know, putting the juxtaposition that, you know, think back to the start of the Industrial Revolution. We have a, a situation where it is the norm that children might work 14 hours a day, six days a week. That was the status quo. That was where we were. And you had pioneers, you had change makers that changed that status quo, that said, doing this with our children is insane. I need to take them out. I want to educate them. I want to get them in full-time education. And yes, use this time to train them, not just as yeah, my workforce. And so we've been through these different changes and are we here standing at the cusp of another one? We have incredible technology that we have never had access to before. We are discovering new ways of digitizing our interactions and working remotely, but also connecting in ways that we've never had before. And is this a place where in a hundred years time, people might look back and say, this was it. This was a moment in HR history where things changed, where we changed the status quo and how we went about doing things. So quite an interesting call to action and sort of how can we be a change maker? In terms of Reward Gateway's tools, I haven't worked with them directly. I don't know them personally. Um, what was interesting for me is just, I've spoken in uh, about Kylie Green's session. She has the reward, uh, sorry, the engagement bridge. So they have this concept of all the different ways that you can nurture and build engagement inside your organization. And They've built a tool which is touching across these aspects. Um, and that's always interesting for me because it's just, there's an eternal dilemma. If you've got something that does everything, it tends not to do everything well. There'll be areas where it's weaker and it's just like, you know, I love these bits, but these bits, I've kind of got them, but, you know, they're not quite there. Do I really want to get someone else to come in and do it? And then equally, um, you can get single um, focus providers that will do an excellent platform, but you've got a single platform. So if you want to do a variety of things, you have to have lots of different platforms that can lead to sort of different experiences, different logins. Is that the best way of going around it? So 
With Reward Gateway's um, platform, my takeaway is that they offer a great solution over a variety of different things in terms of recognition, engagement, socialization, um, surveys, uh, analytics. They're doing all these different things. And if they're doing them well, it is definitely a worthwhile product to be checking out. And certainly, if there is one takeaway from this summit, it is that Reward Gateway as an organization have absolutely the right idea about engagement. You are working with an organization that is trying to take you and their product in the right direction. So certainly, anywhere I go in the future, Reward Gateway is going to be in there as one of the organizations that I want to talk to about my situation, about what I'm trying to accomplish, and see how they can be a partner in delivering that great place to work. All right, thank you very much, and on to the next session.